Hey pen peeps, it's Troy again and I'm here with another pen. This time it's a vintage pen and uh, this one kind of came by request uh, because after some of you had seen that I had this particular pen you'd said, hey, you know, Troy, I'm looking forward to the review on it. So here it is. This is the first Maybe Todd that I have here in my collection. I'll go ahead and bring this up towards the camera and I also have a decent picture of it as well. Uh, but the Maybe Todd Blackbird. Uh, this is a pen uh, that was manufactured in England. So that tells me the date of it just a little bit. The Maybe Todd Company had uh, been around a while and they were started in 1859 by John Maybe and Edward Todd uh, based in New York City. Well, uh, they opened up a London office in 1884 uh, and they were making um, uh, manufacturing of pens 1909 for lever fillers um, in the U.S., hard rubber, and then celluloid, uh, continuing on up through the 1930s or so. Uh, this particular pen is probably uh, right in the 30s to 40s era. Uh, it was sold as a black chased hard rubber, although um, it is not chased, <laughs> so it's a smooth uh, black hard rubber pen, which, by the way, is, is an excellent material. I tend to like uh, BCHR um, or the ebonite or black uh, hard rubber. I also like red ripples too and I'm going to show you one here and compare it here very shortly. But this particular pen was on my radar for a while. Now maybe Todd had manufactured a pen called the Swan and it was considered to be one of their upper end pens and the Blackbird was considered to be slightly lower than the Swan. The Swan pens often had some nice ornate overlays on them. Uh, this however was just plain old black, obviously a lever filler. Um, now my understanding is that in the early 1950s that the B-Row company bought out maybe Todd in England. Uh, so this definitely was prior to the 1950s, probably somewhere in the 1930s uh, or so considering the material maybe even as early as the 20s. Um, not really sure, because uh, quite honestly, I haven't been able to find a lot of information other than a broad range of dates. But it, um, it is a um, clipless uh, pen, and I don't see where there was a clip that was ever attached to it at one point, but it is a nice screw cap. It comes off after, you know, just a couple of turns, uh, and uh, it actually turned out to be a very, very nice pen. I, I was actually quite happy with it. Uh, never owned a Maybe Todd. I've seen them. I almost jumped at one a while back. I'm talking like two years or so ago. I saw a Blackbird that was for sale and I said, well, you know, I'm familiar with them. I've seen them. I've heard about them. Wouldn't mind having one. Well, this particular one I saw for sale just recently um, out of a, a seller in uh, Germany. Well, uh, this German seller also had um, an office or a location in Greece, so this was shipped to me out of their office out of Greece, and it came here just a little while ago. I say a little while ago, about two weeks ago. And I've been using it an awful lot. So, this, um, you know, absolutely stunningly beautiful. Uh, it, it really it shows just a tiny little bit of wear that you would expect from a pen that's, you know, the better part of uh, 100 years old. Uh, but, fantastic physical condition been very happy with it so let me uh, give you an idea of what this pen is and let's zoom out just a little bit so you can see how this pen compares to some other pens maybe a little more contemporary as well Waterman 52 so if you're familiar with an old Waterman 52 that's about the size of that Blackbird let's go modern a little bit though let's go with a Pelican this is uh, an M600 so that gives you an idea that it's fairly close, maybe just a little longer than a Pelican M600. Even more modern than that, let's go with a Twisby Swipe. So, you know, a pen that came out just this year, so you can see side by side, size-wise. And the ubiquitous Pilot Metropolitan, which I do believe there's probably some kind of Geneva Convention uh, style regulation that every pen reviewer has to have a Pilot Metropolitan when you're doing size comparisons. So, um, let me go ahead and show you a little more about this particular pen. We'll uh, give you some details. We'll do a writing sample.
right, so here I am back with my Rhodia dot pad. I'll be honest with you, I have not written on Rhodia with this particular pen. I can tell you that it didn't do, do so wonderful on Ayush, uh, which is more of a, a coarse, toothy uh, paper. But I use it an awful lot for letter writing, only because um, some pens work well with it, and I like the spacing, and I like the fact that it's a top spiral bound. Uh, but um, this particular pen does great on ordinary notepad paper uh, and uh, like copy paper, stuff like that, that I've been using an awful lot, notepads. Uh, so we'll see how well it does um, on a Rhodia dot pad, since a lot of people are familiar with that being fountain pen friendly. Now, looking at another uh, website that's out there, and I'll put a link to it here in the description for this particular video, that the production run was between 1915 and 1950. Uh, for the Blackbird, uh, and it said that they moved in the 1930s or so um, over to a celluloid as opposed to using the black chased or the black hard rubber. So, quite honestly, this could be uh, between um, 1915 and the 1930s, so maybe it's 20s into the 30s. Don't really know. All it said was. 30s uh, for when they changed over to celluloid as opposed to the uh, the hard rubber. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, open the thing up, and it does post very nicely, very securely. It's not back weighted tremendously, so you can write with it like this. For me, in my paws, it's even long enough on that throw on that length of that pen uh, that I can get by with it very nicely without having to have it. Uh, posted. It's not too short for me. It's not a tremendously broad uh, pen in terms of the girth of the barrel or in that section. It's got a nice, uh, you know, a fairly nice smooth section that does flare out just a little bit uh, and then down to that beautiful 14 karat gold nib. I've shown you a better picture of that um, and if not I'm going to put it up right here. But let's go ahead and try the Maybe Todd. Like I said, this is my first Maybe Todd pen that I've owned and it's a brand that's been on my radar and I've been wanting to add it. You know I like vintage, you know I like modern, so um, I, I enjoy the history behind them and I enjoy uh, being able to try various models. I like a good breadth in my collection and yeah, just knocked over the cap. So let's go with the, the Maybe Todd Blackbird. Uh, this has got, you know, a fine to medium. It's more on the medium side than it is fine for that particular nib. And you can get a good amount of flex out of it. It, it, uh, it was sold as a semi-flex nib, but quite honestly, um, it's actually fairly flexy. I don't flex it much. I, I'm not a huge lover of flex nibs, although I do use them and I do enjoy them from time to time. Uh, I do love a good flex, but uh, when I'm using for a daily writer, don't really care, so I don't really uh, go ahead and play with it that way. But this is a, four, a 14K nib. I can tell you, it doesn't like Rhodia quite as much because uh, sometimes it gives me a hard start where I've never had a hard start with this pen. The entire time I've had it and been using it on anything, um, it, it didn't give me a hard start like I did here and it did here. But, uh, so let's go ahead and... But it is a very smooth writer. I mean, it glides across the page. I put into this pen some Waterman Black, which I tend to do on uh, most of my vintage pens to start out, number one, because of the reputation of Waterman Ink uh, being vintage friendly. Number two, I like it. Number three, uh, you know, it's one of the, the my go-to inks when I want to, especially for black, when I want to match up a black pen uh, with a black ink. I've just been very happy with Waterman Inks. They're plentiful. They're inexpensive. Um, and uh, I use it incessantly, and I got a lot of it, quite honestly, uh, that I've been able to uh, amass here within my collection. So, it keeps up with me no matter what. I, like I said, I've been using this particular pen a lot. Um, it's been a daily carry for me. 
and sometimes on this particular pad, you can actually hear that tiny little squeak, which, to be honest with you, I haven't been hearing on any other pad except uh, this Rodeo. You do have a little bit of feedback to it, but um, uh, on any other, any other pad that I've been writing with, uh, but on this particular pad, it makes just a little bit of squeak. Um, on the uh, Ayush pad that I had, um, it, when you sometimes on, on the upstroke, it would almost catch just a little bit. It just didn't like that upstroke. Here, upstroke no problem. Any of the copy paper I've been using, upstroke no problem. In, uh, but on that Ayush paper, which is toothy, uh, I got a lot of pens who just, you know, a little scratch on it. It was just a little scratchy when you went to go do the upstroke on, on an Ayush pad. But so far, um, I've been right happy with it. I'm enjoying writing with this pen a lot. Uh, I've been very happy. I can't complain whatsoever. Eventually, I want to add the Maybe Todd Swan onto my list. Uh, but um, the Blackbird, like I said, my for a, a first Maybe Todd. Um, first of all, it's simple yet elegant, which to me is absolutely gorgeous. You know, just that tiny little line here at the cap. A uh, nice little smooth finial there at the at the base of the pen, the same thing. A little bit of a taper down here at the end. Obviously a lever filler with a tiny little spoon, a small spoon there. Nice solid imprint um, here. You know, the Blackbird self-filling pen, maybe Todd and Company Limited, made in England. So um, very, very happy with it. And it's served me well so far, very reliable writer. You can't go wrong if you get a really good vintage pen. Um, I enjoy playing with vintage pens and collecting the vintage. Um, like I said, I like modern ones too, but I am always, always happy to add another good vintage. And there's such a broad uh, width uh, or breadth of pens from which to choose uh, from the early 1900s, which is my favorite time period, uh, up through the uh, early 1940s. Uh, that I was always glad to add the uh, the Maybe Todd Blackbird. So there you go. Um, got another pen uh, that is by request, uh, which will be a modern pen. I had a, a specific request for Pelican M1000, so uh, that is on my radar uh, for a an upcoming video as well. So hey, thanks for watching. Uh, there's an idea for you for your collection if you can run across these. I, every so often I do see these online and usually restored, nice, ready to go, and I don't think you can go wrong if you can get a good one.